these meeting to order. Uh, first up, looking for approval of the agenda. Motion and support, additions or deletions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Public comment. Public, you have three minutes to address the board. Step up and give us your name. Not all at once. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Stephen Reiser. I live here in the city of Jackson and it's an honor to uh, serve at, at, at your will with your approval to the Region 2 Area Agency on Aging. I've been in that position for two years and I'm before you today uh, requesting reappointment. I just wanted to share a few highlights of things that uh, I've been part of on that board. Like with any board, any appointment, uh, probably you all know there's a little bit of a learning curve. You don't uh, start out knowing everything that's happening or going on. Uh, and if you do start out that way, you probably shouldn't be on the board because you probably think you know everything when you don't. Uh, so taking that two years and learning a little bit, my first initial focus was kind of on process and governance. And there were some things that I noticed that I was a little disheartened with, so I began immediately speaking up on behalf of, of Jackson County residents. These were things like the bylaws of the organization weren't being followed. The policies of the organization relating to the board weren't being followed. The Opens Meeting Act wasn't being followed. The Freedom of Information Act wasn't being followed, and various other state laws weren't really being followed. So I will say with, with the help of uh, another appointee of this county and other counties, I started to bring light to these issues over and over and over and over again. I'm a little disappointed to tell you it took nearly this whole two years to get some action on addressing those issues. It took phone calls with the state to clarify, yes, in fact, you do have to follow the Opens Meeting Act because you're a public board and you accept tax dollars, but I'm very pleased that we are starting to comply with that. I also was pleased to be appointed to the Bylaws Committee. In that Bylaws Committee, we were able to make several great changes uh, one thing, since they were a public meeting, I want to bring to your, your, your attention. As a committee member, I defended your right to appoint members to that committee. There were some who wanted to have the committee established in a way where the board itself and the officers of the agency appointed to itself. Obviously, there's a conflict of interest here. Obviously, all you get is the yes man board that Mr. Overton probably wishes he had. <laughs> Thank you for the chuckle. Uh, the other thing that I, I, I brought with me today, so, so I respectfully request that you, you would consider reappointing me uh, so I can continue to work on these things, so I can continue to hold the, the uh, agency accountable uh, for all of our tax dollars. I do want to say that the agency provides exceptional service to seniors and individuals with disabilities. This is not a problem all the way through the organization of providing services to that population. We have great nurses, we have great social workers, but we do need to continue to make progress. I also Two have seconds other, left, Steve. I have one handout I want to quickly give you um, to show you that uh, not everybody who's been appointed from this county follows that sort of uh, tenacity and accountability that I do, and in fact has made several, several violations Dean. of the Opens Meeting Act here. So can I give time, this to you? To or? Motion to receive. So moved. Support. And support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you, Stephen. More public comment? That's right. From new speakers. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Is your, my name is Matt Dame, as you're probably aware. I've applied to be on the board of directors of the Region 2 Area Agency on Aging. A little bit about my background. I earned a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University in telecommunications and film and a master's degree in e-commerce from Madonna University. My professional background is in corporate video production and corporate web development. Uh, some of my customers you probably heard of, uh, Ford Motor Company, J.C. Penney, DuPont, Siemens Building Technologies, to name a few. 
I'm currently a Norville Township trustee, and you're probably aware that one of the seniors lunch uh, senior lunch uh, program is being held in Norville Township at the Township Hall, so I've got an awareness of that uh, program firsthand as trustee. My daughter last summer also volunteered uh, with the AAA. She's in her last year of, of a nursing program at uh, Oakland University, so she found that experience extremely valuable. Uh, one of the key missions of the AAA is keeping our aging population as independent as possible and in their homes as long as possible. In my mid-20s, uh, with the loss of my parents, I took on the role of taking care of my grandmother. So I've got some first-hand experience of what, what it's like to take care of a senior from living in an apartment and navigating assisted living and the nursing home environment. Uh, with my professional background in business and digital marketing, uh, I'm confident I'll be an asset to the AAA. In the past, the County Commission has honored me with its support to serve on the Jackson Traffic Safety Program Board and the Community Corrections Advisory Board, so I appreciate your consideration for this appointment to the AAA. Time. Any other public comment? Public comment is closed. Moving on to other committee items. First is the minutes of the March 12, 2018 meeting. Motion and support, changes or corrections. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Next up are the appointments. First, we have the Joint Airport Zoning Board. The board has three openings. The first is a term expiring four of 2021, currently held by John Warden, and the applicants are John Warden, Jack Cook, and Thomas Schaffner. All three of those are current serving members whose terms are expiring, and if there are no nominations from the floor besides those, a motion for all is in order. I would move to send all three names to the full board for airport zoning board. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Next up is the Region 2 Area Agency on Aging Board. We have three public members. They're all expiring the same time. We have three incumbents that have applied. Howard Griffiths, Megan Kaiser, and Steve Ryger. And we have four applicants. The appl applicants being those three plus Matt Dame. So we'll fill these one at a time looking to fill the first seat currently held by Howard Griffiths, and the applicants are Griffiths, Kaiser, Ryger, and Dame. I would nominate Matt Dame. Nomination of Matt Dame and a support. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Next is a seat held by Megan Kaiser. <coughs> Motion and support. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Megan's name will be forwarded. And last, the public member, Steve Ryger. Motion and support. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Those three names will be sent on to the full board for recommendations of appointment. <laughs> Next up, we have the EG, BRA, and EDC updates. Amy, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Um, you have a report um, in front of you on the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. You can see that there have been a number of projects that we've assisted with the um, EPA grant that we administer. The old Irish mill is a project that's still on the forefront. Um, he's looking at scaling that down. I think I've reported that to you before. Still uh, working to obtain financing on that and our environmental consultant is working with him to um, try to bring that project to fruition. Jackson Automatic Sprinkler out on West Michigan in Parma was a former Janix building and Jackson Automatic Sprinkler moved out there and the work, um, the environmental work is um, complete there. 
ATA car and truck accessories. Um, we assisted with the BEA and do care compliance and our work is done on that project. Missioner Plating, we're working with county officials and the um, MDEQ um, to look at solutions for continuing to work on um, that property. Uh, there's a recycled pallet uh, out on the east end at 2314 Tyson Street and um, new purchaser is looking to buy that and we're looking at doing environmental work there. There were some underground storage tanks uh, found there and the owner is uh, working with our environmental consultant to get those removed. And we also assisted CP Federal Credit Union for a property at the former Jimmy's filling station in Brooklyn where they're going to or expand, not relocate. <coughs> Amy, me. where's the ATA car and truck assessment? Um, that is on West Avenue and Franklin. Thank you. questions of Amy on this part of the report I, I did neglect to mention just to let you know also since that grant does come through the county that the EPA grant expires uh, September 30th of this year so we're working diligently to get those funds committed and try to be able to use all that money that we can uh, within the community before those expire Do you want me to continue with EDC? Okay, um, again, you have the report in front of you. Um, we have money um, available to loan. We, <coughs> you, uh, the county commission recently approved a revised reuse plan on March 20th. So uh, we got an immediate approval of that plan that you approved from the EDA. So we're looking forward to redoing our marketing materials and uh, marketing that program as revised as it has a little bit more flexibility um, in it than it used to so we're hoping we can get some of those funds out and I just spoke with somebody I think it was last Friday I had an inquiry that I'm hoping might um, be able to use that loan program <coughs> excuse me um, and I think Debbie wrote in here that we do have a new member that you appointed it, um, also March 20th I believe Martha first to know is now on the EDC board I think that's about it, unless you have any questions. Commissioners, any questions for Amy? I'm sorry? I can Go right ahead. Through the help of the Brownfield Authority and, and Amy and, and Debbie, we were able to help a young man create a property on, the, on East Michigan Avenue next to the exchange. And he's put a new roof on the building. He's cleaned it up. He's now become, uh, he's be begun remanufacturing and rebuilding uh, production machinery inside there. He has warehouse space available. And because of that expansion, is uh, the one who's getting ready to buy the uh, pallet company. So this mm -hmm. is a, and the reason why he started this was that he lived in the neighborhood and he felt he could make a difference by just starting with a blighted building in his neighborhood. The assistance of Blackman Township and their inspectors was very important. And uh, it's turned out to be uh, a real nice asset to the neighborhood. Uh, it's no longer storing couches or old TVs. And uh, it has cameras and they've been able to work with public safety on getting uh, people off the street who were utilizing the area for uh, illegal transactions. So I think it's really a story of somebody in a neighborhood deciding to uh, make a difference by themselves and uh, spend a little bit of their money to uh, create something. And uh, the business is very interesting. I think it's something we all should really take a look at. And as you drive by, if you see it, you know, stop and just think about that. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of Amy on either? No. Thank you, Amy. Next up, we have the Conservation District Report with Lori Steck. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My report uh, will cover all uh, conservation activities since we were, I was last here in September. Um, first of all is our spring tree sale, which um, this is the last week. This is crunch time. Next week is the sale. 
we've already ex exceeded last year's numbers so we're pretty excited to see where we finish up this year um, some special events uh, the household hazardous waste collection event was held uh, September 23rd of 2017 and as some of you know the numbers this year were uh, we had over 700 cars come through it was um, crazy busy uh, we had over 20,000 extra pounds of hazardous waste collected this year than we did in 2016 uh, we had 59,494 pounds of hazardous waste collected latex paint we doubled um, we doubled the amount uh, 37,230 pounds of latex paint uh, 39,150 pounds of electronic waste uh, were collected there was only 25,000 in 2016 so the numbers were huge um, I don't think we could handle anything more than that uh, that we s technically opened at nine o'clock but I had people in line at 630 they were waiting to get into the fairgrounds before I was even here to set up so uh, and we, we last car came in at two o'clock so that's we had a nice little flow through the fairgrounds um, people backed up down the street um, it was uh, it was a busy busy day we didn't get out of there probably till six o'clock but it was very successful we had some people complaining about the wait but I mean it's a good cause so most people understood that and brought their books and some snacks and so it was very successful this year uh, we had six at least 16 volunteers four staff and then 10 uh, workers from the household hazardous waste company there so we had uh, 30 people there um, at least 30 people uh, helping throughout the day uh, let's see we had a couple um, we, we had a booth at the Jackson County Sportsman's Expo where we promoted our hunter access program the county recycling program um, we had winter stonefly hunt it was a, a, a very successful event we had 16 volunteers that collected samples from four areas of the Grand River for the presence of stoneflies uh, and they were present in three of the streams sampled uh, as far as grants go it's been a pretty successful year for grants um, we were uh, our conservation technical assistance uh, grant was renewed our hunter access program grant was renewed uh, we received the Jackson County Community Foundation a grant for um, funding to conduct a countywide survey on people's perceptions of the recycling uh, situation in Jackson County that study will be complete by April 30th uh, 2018 where we just uh, sent out uh, we got a list from Jackson County GIS for just a random sampling of uh, residents to send the survey to and those should all be returned shortly um, we also received uh, the Michigan Agricultural Environmental Assurance Program grant uh, it's a full-time technician um, who assists farmers with vol a voluntary program to make their farming operations more environmentally compliant that uh, is a full-time employee he covers uh, Jackson County and Calhoun County uh, we also received uh, the Michigan Invasive Species Grant program uh, that's a two-year grant um, with the help of Jackson County they were the uh, the lead on that and we're, we're kind of we have the employee and we're handling the money um, that's a full-time technician who we did hire uh, dr. Sheikha Singh um, it, we technically started March 15th um, the night the first night of the men's garden club had a, a series of talks that they're hosting so that was the first uh, day of the grant so March 15th and it'll go till 2020 uh, basically uh, the purpose of that is to establish a CISMA which is a cooperative invasive species management area and to identify invasive species offer education education is the first the biggest thing probably in the first two years of the grant and the, gr <coughs> the grant is covers a tri-county area of Jackson Lenaway and uh, Washtenaw counties and we also received another scrap tire collection grant uh, and of the 19 townships in Jackson County 13 of the townships have expressed interest in having um, having their own or partnering with a neighboring township on hosting a uh, tire collection this summer uh, Jackson we're doing one in the city uh, I believe it's like July 20th 21st something like that so that'll be the 
countywide one, which will hold in the city. So grants, um, we did well um, since we've been here last. Things are looking good. Uh, and we continue to look for, for more uh, grants to expand our programs. Uh, the recycling coordinator educator, like I said, the big thing right now has been uh, the countywide survey. Uh, we've also been meeting with representatives from Consumers Energy to uh, about a possible partnership to expand the household hazardous waste event. They did give us a grant, or a, they partners partnered with us last year, um, and they collected uh, freezers and uh, refrigerators, air conditioning units, and then they also made a donation towards the program that did help us cover some of the bill last year. So we're working on that. And we're working, we're also looking for other grants to maybe offer maybe a spring collection as well as a fall collection to kind of cut down uh, on the amount of traffic in the fall. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. We also worked with Jackson County Parks to get recycling containers Lori, in the county parks. Yes. Mike's got a question for you. Lee. Lori, uh, given the success of the hazardous waste collection, any, uh, I don't know, any thoughts on what we can do to you know, maybe break it up rather than our central location? I'm thinking, you know, there's 19 townships. Is there any interest from the townships to having, you know, their own recycling event where we can help them coordinate and on site? So i got to believe there's a, a whole lot of folks out and about who don't necessarily want to come all the way downtown, but right. would be willing to go to the township hall or something. Right. I'm sure that would be if... Uh if there, it's a very expensive, as you probably know, it's a very expensive day. So if, um, I don't know if, I mean, if the county is, if the funding is broken up between townships like that, is that what you're talking? I'd like or? to think the township would kick in too. It's well, no, yeah, also. definitely. And then, I mean, it depends. On, you can also charge people to come in. Like right now we're charging $5, $5 a carload, which some you can bring in one can of paint or you can bring in a whole truckload for $5. We could always you know they could figure that out too to help with the cost but we actually have not even considered that because right now because it's always been just that one countywide yeah i was just thinking but now that it's so one big county wide is, is had great success but again but it's, it's huge now it, it went it's from, all in one location whereas maybe you split it up it's more manageable right sharing some of the costs with uh you know and no it's definitely worth all looking those into. folks out out in the community um you know who have a bucket of paint or whatever it is they want to get rid of it right no it's something definitely worth worth looking into uh, okay some of our upcoming projects um, like I said this week is kind of crunch time for our tree sale uh, and we have an adopt a highway scheduled for this Thursday also uh, spring tree sale is next week um, so every day next week is something tree sale. The 21st, 20th and 21st is the pickup day. And then that's Friday and Saturday. Sunday we have Earth Day in the park. Uh, Monday we have a presentation to the Lumen Christi Environmental Club. Uh, it's an invasive species and recycling uh, pr presentation for their environmental club. The 24th is Project Red, Rural Education Day. Right now we have about 1,200 kids <coughs> signed up for that. Uh, then that Wednesday, we have a presentation at Jackson County ISD. Uh, Thursday, we have nothing to do. And then Friday, we have Arbor Dig Celebration at Potter Park Zoo. So basically from here until the 27th, we're pretty swamped. Uh, and then we have an adopted stream coming up on May 5th. Native plant sale this year uh, is on May 19th. Uh, we did a pre-order this year again. Not a lot of... Um, not a lot of uh, people responded to that. Uh, based, so basically what we're going to do is just make the conservation district portion of it. Uh, we're going to have a booth on it with invasive species information um, for our grant. Uh, and like I said, crap, scrap tire <laughs> collections throughout Jackson County all summer, actually starting in the spring, um, going through uh, uh, mid-July. Learning Fair, Jackson County Fair, Great River Cleanup in September, and then the Hazardous Waste Collection right now is scheduled for September 22nd. Another thing with the scrap tire thing is it's hard to get, um, you have to schedule really early to get the company to, so I don't know how many, because they're coming from, where are they coming? They're coming from Livonia, and to get them, if we had to do multiple ones, it might be harder for scheduling, but... 
but I will definitely look into it. It would be a lot easier to have smaller events than one large event. So, is there any questions? Uh, we c work with a uh, uh, ERG out of Livonia. They take all the hazardous waste. Um, latex paint isn't considered hazardous waste because it's water-based. So we have another company that comes in and takes that, and that is actually, um, it's remixed and reused and through Habitat for Humanity. Okay. So the latex paint is reused. Uh, we have uh, e-waste uh, e uh I don't even remember what the name of their company is. Recycling Jackson helps with the e-waste and with the latex paint collection. Obviously, all the uh, the e-waste is is all recycled. Um, and then the hazardous waste—I don't even know what they do with it. I just know that it's <laughs> they do the right thing with it, so it's not ending up in the landfills. Right. And the tire the tires the tires go. Uh, we go through um, a company in Dowagiac, uh it's called Deer Path Recycling, and I know that that tire, the, the tires are shredded, and a lot of the stuff goes to making asphalt and playground padding and, um, you know, parking blocks, and so it's all, it's all recycled for the tires. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you, Lori. All right, thank you. <coughs> Next up, we have the Youth Center Semi-Annual Report. Jeremy. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, as you uh, see before you, um, uh, at the time of submitting the report, we had 19 uh, residents in detention. Four of those youth are from out of county. Um, we have developed a good relationship with Isabella, Isabella County. Um, they had, uh, their probation officers came down and kind of was a fluke that they reached out to us to see if we had any open beds at the time. And um, when the probation officer came down to work with their youth that was with us, um, commented several times about um, the servicing that was being provided and the support that was being provided that other facilities that she has been involved with hadn't been um, provided for that youth. So um, they have started utilizing us as their first contact. Um, Commissioner Elwell, I still commit to Jackson County residents um, that we will uh, uh, always, um, out of county youth will not interfere with any Jackson County residents of needing to be brought in. Um, I know, again, in the past, um, prior to myself, that had been an issue at times, and I commit, continue to commit that to you. Um, we have seven uh, youth in uh, our treatment program and have two more starting tomorrow, actually. Um, there is a shortage statewide in treatment beds, um, and we're looking to try to see if that's something that is beneficial for, for our, for, as an option. Our program is heavily involved in, in the, the work with the family, and so having Having a, a youth that is um, from a distance from uh, Jackson local makes it really difficult because we can do a lot of work with the youth and then we're putting them right back into the same environment that they came back to or uh, from. So uh, trying to work on seeing what, what that looks like for us. Um, I have a picture of the uh, some initial pre- um, pictures of our gym prior to um, the full renovation. Um, remember back in December we had uh, an issue with the flooring and had to have that replaced and added the, the finalized picture. Again, we're still looking to um, have uh, court lining done on the floor, um, but we're very happy with the final product of that, and I think as you look at it, you will, you see why. Um, we're getting ready to gear up um, for our gardening program again. We are increasing our overall um, bed space, if you will, um, meaning garden space, uh, to really tr be intentional to try to do some uh, more entrepreneurial I work with the youth uh, for our treatment. This is on our treatment program. So that some of the uh, produce can be uh, sold um, and then that fun 
funds can go back to help the youth with some of their court costs um, as, as, again, um, utilizing some of their uh, obligations to, to the community. Um, have had a lot of training going on with our staff, um, working with LifeWays for their mental health um, first aid. We, uh, Spring Army University recently did their uh, human trafficking training, and our staff have gone to that. And then um, the uh, juvenile court uh, um, association had their conference, and they brought in a national speaker called uh, named Tall Cop, and I don't recall his actual name, but he's a former police officer, um, but I think he's like 6'7", um, and really is focusing on drug uh, awareness and prevention, and we've had several staff that have been a long, long time in the, in the field that have said this was the best training that they have ever gone to, so we're trying to figure out how we can um, get him back into Michigan on the detention side as well. Um, our resident management system that we had go live January 1 is working well. We're getting a lot of information, still working on how to get some of that, uh, that data out. Um, but very happy with the overall operation of, of that new system. And then finally, uh, this was this is a huge win for the county in general, quite honestly. Um, the the child care fund um, handbook has changed dra uh, drastically um, over, from 2013, but it was really implemented over the last couple years, um, giving counties time to get on board with it. They started doing the auditing, um, and in the past they would only pull a month uh, to evaluate. Now they're doing an entire year. The co other counties that have been audited prior to us have just talked about the headache and the difficulty in it. And quite honestly, just the overall um, nitpicky uh, that was happening within the auditing of it. We are thrilled. Um, we have zero, zero findings whatsoever. And that, that's unheard of from, some, from the other counties that have already been audited. So um, with the finance department here, with the juvenile circuit court, with the youth center, uh, with all in the child care fund, we are just really thrilled. Um, happy with our staff that, that, um, that keep all of that in line with it. So um, with that, are there any questions? Commissioners, any questions of Jeremy? Right. Here, go ahead. So a little while ago, Jeremy sat down with me for an hour or two. Um, I visited the youth center because obviously, you know, we issued the final report of the race, the age, um, I guess, data. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's talking about this, the child care fund. And actually, I had Jeremy sit down with me and show me the forms that they have to fill out and what's... Um, acceptable and what's not and what it covers um, in your operating and all that and it, it's amazing <laughs> that you, you guys don't have any deficiencies there because it's a mess really um, one of the things that we're hoping to push for obviously is um, they're required to maintain certain data in their youth center and um, they have certain reporting, obviously, and I found that one of the things that isn't covered but is mandatory is the actual program, computer program, and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And there's no reimbursement for that at all, or no administrative uh, fees that are given back from the state in regards to that. So, um, Good job there and, you know, maintaining your budget. But the other thing is, as I sat down and talked to Jeremy about long-term, if this race the age does go through, because in general, you know, the policy is good. You know, we don't want to necessarily send 17-year-olds to prison right away. Um, but Jeremy has a plan also. I mean, we do have the facility and the, the capability of taking in those 17-year-olds. And Jeremy has already worked out a plan you know, and went through it with me a little bit. Um, so kudos to you for having the, you know, foresight to 
look into the future because it might happen, you know. Um, but even even if it didn't, just the expansion and you know having beds, we still have a lot of space there. So I'm confident that under Jimmy's direction and leadership, that you know Jackson County residents will continue to get good service there for our juveniles. Um, and just want to say thanks for your time and showing me around and you know giving me all those little itty bitty numbers and yeah. showing me how that form works so thanks you're welcome thank you for coming out any other questions of Jeremy commissioners thank okay. you thank you next up we have the equalization 2018 report Ruth good, good morning, morning. Um, this morning I have for you the L4024 um, that I'm requesting that you uh, forward on to the full board for approval and certification. Uh, as you know, this is a time of year um, uh, you're required in April to meet an equalization session and certify these numbers. Um, all units have reported. Everyone was in compliance. Um, Equalization went quite well this year, uh, much smoother than it has in, in years past, and we're right now finalizing, uh, compiling all of the um, statistical analysis and data that, that we put together in our larger equalization report for you, so that'll be coming to you shortly. Um, the certified numbers um, are 5466480710 dollars this year. Um, uh, I can tell you that uh, assessed value did go up 2.62%, taxable value went up 2.89%. So um, are there any questions? Commissioners, any questions for Ruth? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to send it on to the full board for approval. Motion and support. Questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, we have the Register of Deeds semi-annual report. Mona. Good morning. I'm sure everybody's already read the report, right? <laughs> and you hit, were missing some pages. Everybody got the last three also? Uh, Mona, I'm not sure if they got added to, do you know if they got added to board docs, Mike? Or? I don't. Think so. I think she emailed. I yeah, think she I did email. She emailed. I think three or four pages individually on Friday. I think. Yeah. Well, just to go over a few highlights. Um, this year, we total amount of money that went through our office was four million nine hundred sixteen thousand. Some change. In that, we forwarded three million to the state for state transfer tax. One hundred forty-one thousand went to the automation fund and 91,000 went to Remont program. If you look through the report, you can see based on our accounts how much we were able to collect less our department expenses. We <coughs> added 1,126,000 to the general fund. Um, it, I just break it down in the type of instruments we recorded. We had maybe 500 less documents this year recorded compared to last year, but our revenues were higher, which is great. Um, what else do you want to see? I can say one great note, our sheriff deed, those are the mortgage foreclosures. 2017 was the lowest we've seen. I go all the way back to 2001, and it was 282. We went down to 221. 2017 which is great but does anybody have any questions commissioners any questions of Mona well I do appreciate the long detailed report a lot of numbers there and you guys always do a great job or you ladies always do a great job with it so we Thank appreciate you. it okay next up we have the register of I'm sorry the county clerk annual report and Amanda sent an email this morning that last minute she's not going to be able to make it. A uh, very detailed report. Read through it. If you have any questions, you can send them on directly to Amanda. Next up, we have the animal shelter millage. Item I. You've heard the sales pitch. Mike, you want to? 
Well, I think the key thing is uh, the language is in there for it, and the request is to move it for the August election, correct? Correct. Commissioners, do you have any questions of uh, the resolution or request of Mike? Again, we've heard it two or three times already, so I think we're all pretty familiar with it. John? I, I, just a comment, Mr. Chair. The, the, the request is to put it on the August ballot. And, and um, you and I have had conversations, and I've made it generally known that I believe, prefer the November ballot when it comes to millages, because we have the majority of individuals who are um, thinking about elections and get out to elections, and I think that you want to have as many individuals uh, involved as possible. Having said that, I've had detailed conversations with, with Brenda, uh, individuals over at the animal shelter. They are... They are making it their mission to get out and to get as many individuals as possible uh, um, notified. Um, you know, we had that conversation. There's a promise there that it's not going to be a stealth campaign, that this is a way of getting out in front of the public, letting them know exactly what the animal shelter needs. And then the reason for the August is is because, one, we're getting both into, and I know that the dollars are going to be coming in not till the next year, but it ensures that dollars spent this current year, should the millage be successful, uh, allows them to attend to those issues that are so important to the, you know, to the health um, uh, of of the the animals in the in the community, uh, regarding the heat and then regarding the cold and then also the facilities itself, which are are in need of updating. So, I'm I'm supportive of the uh, of the idea of 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 August, um, and and with that commitment from Brenda that uh, and and the like that they're going to be out there getting as much information before the voters as possible for that vote takes place. Thanks. Thanks, John. I feel the same way. Typically, I'd want November, and I've commented publicly before on the animal shelter millage, uh, especially with the animal control officers that local agencies are doing right now, not just the sheriff's department, but all of them. And Brenda's argument is in part that if the millage is passed in August, it'll give us time to get animal control officers up and rolling before the cold uh, weather hits. And the sooner we can do that, in my opinion, the better off we are. Mike has assured me that we can find a way to fund it until the funds start coming in, correct, Mike? If we end up passing it in August. So I will be supportive of it. So we'd be looking for a motion to send us onto the full board. If it's the pleasure of this committee to allow it to go in August, so be it. So we'd be looking for a motion. I would move it to the full board. Motion and support to send the animal control millage or animal shelter millage to the full board for the August 7, 2018 ballot. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Next is the parks placement of a county parks millage request on the 2018 election ballot. Uh, Mike, did you want to, or Chairman Chotwell? Okay. Well, obviously, uh, again, we've heard this one too. We do have Jeff and his staff here to speak and answer questions if need, if necessary. I would just mention that um, we also have this one slated for August. And while I appreciate the, the, the thought and sentiment in regard to uh, November, I think that much the same applies, frankly, to the animal millage, uh, or excuse me, to the parks millage. In the sense that, you know, we have a lot of projects going on, a lot of planning going on for parks. We would like to know sooner than later if it's going to be uh, uh, successful at the ballot box so that we can plan accordingly, especially with the new construction and those kind of things. Uh, there's going to be staff and there's going to be uh, additional expense that we need to plan for one way or the other. Um, I, and I would add that Brenda has also pledged that she and her folks would also be, when they're out there talking about the animal, they're going to be talking about the parks as well, helping us educate the public and inform them uh, in regard to what those facts really are uh, on that. So unless you guys have something to add or the board has questions, by all means. Oh, and then, of course, Mr. Shotwell. Chairman Shotwell. I find it interesting that this board, after eight millages, I believe, I count in my mind, have never put them on the November ballot and have worked diligently to make sure they get on the August ballot. We in the past have even had a special meeting called for it. Uh, the reason why we like to go in August, it has nothing to do with the number of attendants, because if it did, we wouldn't have had a May election for the uh, 911 millage. 
Uh, what concerns me is that the board, through its my, its thoughtfulness, is attempting to to avoid the question of what do you do when there are six to eight other items on the ballot uh, from the state of Michigan, uh, and we get lost in the shuffle. I find it disappointing that law enforcement millages are thought of as important enough to be put on the August ballot, uh, but not the November ballot. I, I would think that our kids would be important enough to get on the August ballot. Uh, I think that we have a history of running county millages on the August ballot because we believe that the county has the right to have a ballot issue stand alone and be read uh, in the August primary. Uh, I go back to the first jail millage. I go back to two Department on Aging millages. Uh, I, and I've, I've worked with this board. I understand the concern of, of wanting something in November, but I think that, uh, I think that we're shortchanging uh, the public uh, on this and thinking that they are not willing to come out and vote in August. I think that's, that's a, a sad commentary on our part. And I would hope that this body would recommend an August uh, primary ballot for the uh, parks millage. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioners, any other comments on the parks millage? And is there a motion? John? Well, I just, I just want to, I, I guess, I had that conversation with Brenda. At one time, these millages were actually one millage. It was the pause and parks. And I think that the idea is that it's going to continue to be presented as the pause and parks. But there are two separate millage questions. And it, it does concern me, Mr. Chair, regardless of what we've done in the past, that the perception is that uh, that when, when the majority of voters are at the polls, that's when the, regardless of what's on the ballot, that's what the majority of voters are voting on. And and if you don't have those individuals at the polls, regardless of what's on the ballot, then, and I get it that we argue that it's shortchanging the voters, but at the same time, the, the numbers have always been that the November ballot is where the majority of voters come out. So <clears throat> it's not that we're shortchanging the voters as much as we recognize that it's the reality of voting. But regardless of having said that, I, I if, if it's the pleasure of this full board to put it on the August ballot so they can run, if there's a plan to run these two um, uh, millages together as uh, and speak with one voice on these millages, then I can accept that they're both on August. But I, I think that we're thinking I, I, in the future, I, it's, it's a tough sell to, to go out to the constituents after August 12th or whatever the case may be and say, y you should have been out and voted even though we know that most individuals are going to get out and vote on the November ballot, it's just, it just runs a little, it's a little counterintuitive. But uh, I'll make the motion then, if I can, to move it to the full board for the August ballot. Okay, motion in support. Any other, and it's for an August ballot for the Parks Millage. Any other questions or comments before we vote? I'd ask the clerk call the roll. Commissioner Leitner? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Chairman Elwell? No. Three to one. Okay, it'll be forwarded onto the full board. Next, we have the Parks Ordinance Revision for Animals and Birds. Jeff, you going to? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Kyle's been the architect of this. Kyle Lewis, he's our parks manager. I'll let him address any questions. Good morning. Uh, so each of the three had uh, an attachment that shows the revisions just to our current or ordinance. So anything new that we've proposed to add is in bold and underlined, and anything that was taken out is, is struck through. Um, so the first one, the animal one, the goal with this one is really to become more pet friendly, something that we talked about in our park board commission last uh, summer. And so they approved this in February and are recommending it to this board today. Um, obviously item C under section 10, that's the big change. Um, and again, the language is, is uh, after the state park system. They've done a lot of work in, uh, in the same endeavor of becoming more pet friendly. So we looked at that. 
there's any questions on this one. Cal, I just got one question on item I. It talks about uh, having proof of vaccination uh, if a person has a domestic pet at, pet at a campsite. Is there any wisdom in having language that also requires dogs to be licensed if they're on the commission property, or is that is it left out just because it's a given and it's countywide? Or that's exactly right. Left statewide, I think, countywide. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a question regarding that. Go ahead. It, if you have a license, don't you have vaccination? I mean, you don't get a license without a vaccination. So I'm thinking if you have a license, they don't necessarily have to have proof of vaccination. They have vaccination or they wouldn't have a license. Yes. And uh, and, and, and the vaccination is actually uh, something that's been in. Although we've recrafted it, it's been in this part of the ordinance, but it actually, the dog licensing's in another part of the county's ordinances and addresses that same issue. So there's some redundancy within the uh, the overall county ordinance. So we it could be deleted, but it's some of that language is carry over from the last 50 years that this park ordinance has been in place. It, and again, like many of our park ordinances, we don't we don't have a significant enforcement process in place. We have one part-time ranger, so it's at our request we could ask folks, and they could go retrieve it, and we would give them some leeway. Um, or, or if they're most of our campers are multiple campers, so we would we would say, okay, next time, make sure you bring. The records but uh, yeah enforcement is always with these park ordinances are always the uh, the, the challenge we have the rules in place but uh, we don't have a, a, a robust enforcement presence okay, any other John? just, <clears throat> just uh, if we take a look at section 10 I, uh, the, the language is I think clear I think individuals can recognize the language it's just in terms of this wordsmithing it kind of it, it deviates from the rest of the document and it begins to put the emphasis on the individual versus what's unlawful to the community you know what I'm saying so it's like your responsibility to do this and your responsibility to do that and I think that that's good language in terms of being being clean it just it doesn't necessarily fit real well within the document itself but I think it does exactly what we want it to do and it, we recognize that um, that we're, we are becoming more friendly, I think, to both domestic pets, but service, serv certainly service animals as well uh, in our parks. Yeah, and I, and I, I want to say that we're going to struggle through that transition a bit because we have uh, a dated, I mean, so some of these ordinances haven't been, or, or sections of this ordinance haven't been touched in decades. And so the way folks wrote things and um, described things, and we weren't attempting to wholesale rewrite the entire park ordinance that's a daunting task that's somewhere on my list but not at the top okay if no other questions we're looking for a motion to send it to the full board motion and support questions or comments all those in favor signify by saying aye aye those opposed the same motion carried parks ordinance revision for watercraft as in zodiac Okay, this one again, we looked at the state park system for some best practice language. They manage uh, 1,200 boat access sites across the state. Um, so this is basically adding the addition of prohibiting power loading, which is uh, it's an issue we had at one of our boat ramps last year at Lime Lake. When people, it's a maneuver, they use their motor to uh, load onto the trailer, and the thrust of that uh, washes away the sediment and causes damage, and someone actually got stuck last year at one of the boat ramps. So. Our boat ramps aren't really designed for that type of a process, um, so this just adds that as one of our rules, basically. Commissioners, any questions of Kyle on this one? If not, we'd be looking for the same motion to send it on. Motion in support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Camping. Camping, we just uh, did some wordsmithing, just cleaned up some language. Um, the big change, I guess, is extending our uh, 
our continuous night stays from 7 to 10, so that gives people the opportunity to stay two weekends. The rest of it is just adding a checkout time, which we didn't have, or check-in time, sorry, and then just changing some language from house trailer to, to trailer, RV, or truck camper. Kyle, wasn't there elimination of uh, seasonal? Did we have seasonal before this or not? And has that been eliminated now? Well, we always, we've had that with the discretion of the director. Um, so we have gone away in a different direction from that um, and back to enforcing this maximum stay. Um, we basically, we felt that the maximum stay was actually kind of light, so we went from 7 to 10. Okay. Yeah. Um, to, to add to that, um, this, this section of the ordinance has been, I guess the polite way to say it, has been ignored. Um, and in essence, uh, somewhere decades ago, a director decided that, eh, I'll give everybody the right to camp as long as they want, whenever they want, and we'll actually create seasonal rates, which flies in the face of what the actual ordinance said. It did not allow for seasonal rates, but we have done that. Um, what we found in, in modern history, and it's the reason the state has moved away from allowing seasonal rates, you almost only find that in the private sector of camping, and even many of them are starting to move, move away from it, is that we, we become and have become the place for folks who have nowhere else to go. Um, they, they literally are homeless and will move into our campgrounds in the summer season. And that creates a challenge for, for uh, not only behaviorally, but just from a health. We're not set up for, for seasonal. We don't have um, the dumping station infrastructure, the power infrastructure, in any of the modern, the more modern that would be necessary for an extended stay type of setup. And so we're trying to clean this up so that, one, we, we don't get into some health code um, and health compliance issues, as well as to address the, the, uh, the uh, intent of the camping, which is for leisure and recreation, not as an alternative um, living situation. Okay, commissioners, any questions on the camping? And if not, we'd be looking to send it to the full board. Sure. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Parks purchase of a replacement work truck. Yeah, this is, uh, we, we have a uh, 2008 Ford Ranger. Uh, they went away and are making a big comeback. It's not the same truck. It, it's, the, the new ones they just released are beautiful. But this one is a, a small utility truck that has um, extensive miles, but more importantly, as we've reported, it uh, has a... Uh, a habit of turning itself off at uh, 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 55 or higher speed limits. We've, uh, our mechanics taken a look at it and given me some pricing to get it fixed and then I uh, looked at Kelly Blue Book and what its value was and made a determination that I would rather be investing my money in a, a new pickup truck that has some extended life than to put more money into a truck that isn't, isn't worth it. So we're basically looking to replace this vehicle and uh, offload the, uh, the 2008 Ford Ranger. Jeff, only question for me, isn't the Colorado a downsized truck, and would it be cheaper just to get a standard size four-door cab? But the, the Colorado is a, now a mid-sized truck with an extended cab, which meets our needs for this type of, it'll still have a 10,000-pound towing capacity, so it'll pull a number of our lightweight trailers, and we'll be able to use it for that purpose. But from a gas mileage standpoint and the types of use that we'll make of make with it which are basically transportation related our, our park ranger um, as well as our, our administrative staff doing field evaluation and and work in the field so it's not doing a lot of work workload type now it's got a nice bed in it so we pick up trash where we need to and throw it in the bed or those types of things. But given the number of miles and the way we use it, we felt the mid-sized truck, which gets us about eight miles a gallon better uh, mileage, made sense for us. Okay. It's way better than the 2008 Ranger, which had no, no functionality whatsoever. Yeah, I looked at the prices of just the standard four-door GM or Chevy pickup, and it looked like they were cheaper than this, but yeah. that doesn't account for the better mileage. So Yeah. Okay. Uh, looking for approval at the committee level, I believe. 
commissioners? Yes. Motion and support. Questions or comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks. JC. Local Bridge Program. Morning, Commissioners. Our first item is, uh, I think, good news. I'm real pleased to see um, or present to you that we are submitting for the maximum possible applications for the bridge program this year, rather than just one or two bridges. So you're allowed to submit for, um, I think, uh, four, five projects, and you can lump your preventative maintenance as one, which is what we've done. So $48 million is available statewide and uh, we're going for the gold. We've got uh, a map attached that shows uh, the five different projects. It's actually looking like more because of the, the lavender colored uh, uh, preventative maintenance. Those are basically waterproofing of the deck and basically saving the savable bridges and prolonging their lives. The rehabs, as shown in blue, are the superstructure replacements, just deck uh, replacement work. And then, of course, uh, we have the green, which are full replacements of the bridges. Uh, just an interesting side note, you'll see in the staff report that we've received funding for 17 bridges since 2001. So we've really uh, been aggressive with this program, and I'm happy to see that tradition continue. Looking for your support for the resolution. And Chris, to be clear, this is separate from the Napoleon Road Bridge, correct? Which I think is addressed in your later report. It's already funded separately, correct? Or with prior bridge funding? The Napoleon Road, or... Moon Lake, Moon I'm sorry. Lake. Yeah, Moon Lake, Moon Lake yep. is already awarded, and yep. we're working to get that constructed this year. Okay. Yes. Okay, Commissioners, any questions for Chris on this? If not, we're looking f for approval to send it to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion <coughs> carried. Salt. Salt. It's a love-hate relationship. I hate spending this kind of money. I'm sure you do too, but uh, it's necessary. It's really our, our primary and only weapon for safety in the winter. Uh, we do, as a side note, continuously seek ways to reduce salt use. You might recall uh, your recent approval of new salters for our older trucks, which can be reused on new trucks. And uh, we expect to uh, uh, basically continue monitoring our salt usage very closely and reducing with those. And we're also looking at pre-wetting systems for some of those. So stay tuned for some of that. Pre-wetting helps to reduce salt uh, consumption as well because it pre-activates the salt as it goes down the road and helps it stick to the road surface. So we're planning for uh, 33,000 tons at $1.7 million. We will only buy what's needed, and I'm happy to share also that we're partnering with the city uh, with a 4,000 ton allocation for the city. Interestingly, this is uh, $2.50 less than last year. So um, we continue the tradition of saving money with our joint purchasing program with Calhoun County. They've also benefited from this. Uh, we're fairly confident we're going to once again be lower than the my deal prices. So happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Zick. John. Not really a question, just a comment. And, and Christopher, I appreciate, again, every time we have that opportunity to to pull the city in and, and to have the city utilize these county resources, given that conversation that I have more often than not about differentiating between what is county and what is city and remembering that everybody, who, everyone who lives in the city is also a county resident. And so Absolutely. every time we have that opportunity to reach out and to coordinate, that that's just, I, thank you. Well, you're welcome. And the way we view it is we're one community. So we will, we'll love working with our cities and villages as well as our townships. Okay, commissioners, we're looking for a motion to send it on to the full board. Mark. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Mineral aggregate. Chris. All right. Mineral aggregate. Uh, this, this is fairly straightforward. Various materials needed for construction and maintenance this year. Looks like a total expected award budgetarily of about 175000 of the various materials listed in the staff report there. Any questions? Commissioners. Otherwise, a motion for the full board. Motion in support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Culverts. 
you're going too fast for me. I'm trying a new method here to go paperless on my iPad, so I'm trying to keep up with you. Bear with me as I clumsily find my way through. Once again, uh, culverts for um, various maintenance and um, uh, construction work throughout the county. This is basically just setting a, a fairly attractive price schedule for us to, to follow. So once again, our committee uh, in working with Calhoun County has, uh, this is the second year we've used this vendor, Jim? Yes. Is that right? So we're very pleased to, to get lower prices and uh, we've been real pleased with the quality of the materials we get as well. Commissioners, another full board action? Any questions? If not, a motion's in order. And move the requested motion to the full board. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Skip paving. All right. Um, here in the staff report, you'll see a map attached. Um, we're uh, pleased to be presenting these maps that show the locations of the projects. I'm, I'm assuming you appreciate those as well to show where the money is going. Uh, this basically details uh, primary road projects where we're looking to uh, get some asphalt down uh, prior to a chip seal. Uh, oftentimes, usually the chip seal is put down the following year. So we're looking at this $1.9 million project um, to, to get these roads repaired and, and basically improve their pacer ratings and prolong their lives. Any questions? Commissioners, any questions? If not, another motion for the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Material testing. Big contract. Yes. Materials testing. Uh, we're looking to basically authorize uh, um, a contract with Soils and Materials Engineers, SME. We've been pleased with their services so far with a possible one-year extension. And um, you can see here that our team went to a great amount of work to carefully rank the responses. Uh, they even put together a scoring matrix uh, where they evaluated various factors and uh, SME came out on top. As you know with consultants it's uh, challenging and not always prudent to pick the lowest price so you want the best quality because you'll pay in the end either way if you're, if you're not careful. So again uh, looking for approval for this. So, Chris, just out of curiosity for me, are they actually going out in the field and drawing samples themselves, or are we taking the samples into them? It's a blend. It depends on our workload. If our team's available, we can pull the samples and send it to them for testing. Uh, we are looking at, we do have a lab. Um, we're looking at kind of ramping that up and doing what we can in-house. But we still need uh, supplementary services. Uh, if, we, if we wanted to fully staff for the kind of work we have today, we'd probably have a team of 30 or 40 people on, on board to handle our peak. And then what do you do with them all winter? So we try to blend the balance between private and, and public sector. So work. it's 840000 per year, regardless of how much testing they do for us in that year? No. Um, this is what's budgeted for material testing based on the amount of projects that we have today. For every 100,000 in construction work, you can usually estimate about 6 to 8% of that would be on engineering, design, planning, and testing, right. all wrapped up. So with uh, $34 million already on the docket for this year, you know, that's, uh, that's smaller than you might expect, actually. Okay. But we're trying to minimize the use of consultants to the best of our ability. Commissioners, any questions? If not, be looking for a motion to send it to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Aerial lift. Thank you. We've had good success with our tree trimming work. We've been very aggressive with it. Um, you may have, you might recall that I've talked to you about this before, being about a decade or so behind on tree trimming. Uh, it's, a, it's a problem that uh, really needs to be handled so we we especially like to attack our project roads with a complete roads philosophy as we improve the surface actually handle everything from signs to utilities uh, to the tree canopy and so forth so one of the things we've tried in the last two years that we really liked we first rented one and then purchased that unit if you recall we're now looking to expand that and add a, an aerial uh, boom lift because that work really uh, goes very well for our crews so, Chris, this is actually the second one, Then we did approve one, I think, last year, right? We did. We bought one last year. Right. Correct. Okay. Yep. Hey, Commissioners, any questions? If not, uh, close to the full board. Steve. Uh, prior 
prior to purchasing these aerial lifts, did we have aerial lifts? And how many did we have before these two? Did we rent them before, Jim? In years past, we used bucket trucks, which isn't efficient. We started uh, renting man lifts. We bought one a year ago. This year, we rented two other JLGs, and we were trying to get away from renting. And we think purchasing right now with the two JLGs, or excuse me, the two man lifts, is very efficient. Why are we buying these and not contracting with the private sector? Well, we are actually contracting with private sector also. There's no way we can do all the tree trimming work that we've got. So we're we're supplementing the work. Um, we judiciously choose what we trim versus what the contractors trim. But this is for our crew's use here. Okay, in the past we've had some uh, serious accidents on site with the trees. Are we properly training our staffs on how to operate with these lifts and with aerial uh, limbs coming down and everything like that? We absolutely are. Um, in fact, you may recall with our union contract of three years ago, roughly, we had a certification program initiated. So this is a key component of that. Everything from chainsaws to uh, every piece of, of tree trimming work is carefully trained. We actually set aside a full day or day, a uh, half day to, to train each season at a minimum and sometimes more. We've had experts come in-house and teach our people. Okay, and then while I know we do not have an invasive species or a control mechanism for oak wilt or anything like that, um, are we paying attention to those guidelines that are being put out by the state on not trimming oak trees, uh, you know, in season and, and other items like that and paying attention to the different things? And do we have a reporting mechanism if while we're in the trees we see an invasive? I do know we are abiding closely by the, the guidelines and rules of the oak weld, for sure. In fact, we we are not even cutting now, are we? Oaks, have we stopped? April 16th, oak weld will go into effect. We'll have professional tree service. They will continue to trim, but they will seal. They have an arborist right on site. Okay. Um, for any questions. Because I know that we found it on the corner of Stonewall and Probert, and uh, it's, it is in Jackson County, and it is something to pay attention to with the mature oak trees that we have here. I'm jotting down your suggestion on the reporting of invasive species. Uh, we do watch that. We take environmental stewardship seriously, but I will follow up and make sure that we're doing all that we can with that. Thank you. Yep, Mike. I just wanted to uh, reiterate that um, for the benefit of the board and whomever else, uh, and I know uh, Christopher alluded to it, our staffing plan really does revolve around snow plowing. I mean, you know, you, you got to have a certain number of people to plow snow, but if you have more than that, or if you don't have other things for them to do, be it tree trimming or whatever, uh, and the off, when they're not plowing snow, we suddenly have a whole lot of people doing on not a whole lot, a whole lot of nothing, and that's not good. So we're trying to balance. We always take into consideration uh, that, you know, we can't do it alone, and we frankly don't want to necessarily, it's not our intent to put people out of business, if you will, the private sector, or compete with, but it's it's a fine balance that we have to try to always manage there. So just, you know, just a reminder. Thanks. That's a good point, Mike, and if I could follow up, um, Commissioner Elwell. Um, when we went through our staffing plan, we did not add all of the positions we, we would need for for snow plowing in my dream scenario. I balanced it with uh, the budgetary constraints we're faced with. Um, we balanced it with upcoming retirements. Um, we have 70 routes right now that we want to have uh, a maximum eight hour target in a snowstorm to cover. We still can't do it. It still takes us about 12 hours and we still need seasonals in the winter. So I, d I wanted you, I want you to know that we have and continue to exercise fiscal restraint with our, our staffing. So, and, and um, we have been very judicious with this program, um, piloting a unit as a rental first and negotiating that the rental could be applied as a credit to purchase when we bought the, the first one. So now that we see that it's successful, uh, of course you see here the team has gone to my deal and, and purchased a unit that has all the features that, that make our work more efficient and effective. Chris, just one follow-up thing if you could get for me. I know you don't have it now, but I think the one that we bought last year was a rental unit, was it not? And then we Buy the one we were renting, or did we just get the credit? We were renting one, and we purchased that. Right. That I'd, particular unit? Okay. I'd be curious how many hours we put on it since we owned it, just out of curiosity. Do you know offhand, Jim? You Ballpark? Okay. Yeah, you can just follow up. 
We've used it quite a bit, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the preferred method now, much quicker than the bucket trucks, as Jim alluded to. Okay. So, commissioners, any other questions? John? Chris, and I, and I appreciate the comments made by the administrator and certainly by uh, Chairman Shotwell, but uh, I, I, further down on the list, we do, we are... To, to a degree, we are going out to the public sector to, um, excuse me, to the private sector for pothole patching, and I, I, I think, I mean, we we could start all day and put as many men with with uh, with, with shovels and and, uh, and asphalt and be out there filling potholes all day. I mean, I think that there's <laughs> there's a lot of work for the the crew to ultimately do, but I, but I think I, what I'm hearing and what I appreciate is there's so much pothole. Um, um, work that needs to be done that it, it, we would have to triple the size of our workforce to ultimately do that and, and what you're doing or we're talking about doing is kind of this long term I uh, how, how best to uh, take the personnel that we have in place and ensure that they have uh, a full day's work every day and that's not idle hands and, and again I, I, I just make sure that we're clarifying I think out to the public when we're talking about those private public relationships if we're not doing it with trees we're, we would doing it with potholes but we need we have so many potholes that need to be filled we need to have and, and the tree trimming is an ongoing process that's going to be in perpetuity so I, I think I appreciate I can understand now exactly how how we came to the decision to purchase the, the tree trimming uh, materials vehicles uh, but at the same time go out to the public sector excuse me go out to the private sector to assist with those those road patching so thank you sure Thank you. And I want to make sure the, the board is aware that overtime is still readily available for any and all crews that we constantly post it because there is so much work to do right now. We, again, it's exercising physical con uh, constraint, restraint, where we're not, you know, overstaffing. Uh, we still need uh, quite a bit of overtime for our teams to remember we're catching up on a decade plus of backlogged work, to be honest. So... Okay, Commissioner is looking for a motion to send it to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Tri axle tractors. Yes, um, you recall that we've purchased uh, Flow Boys in our uh, equipment bond, and uh, we also use these tractors to pull gravel trains and um, low boys and so forth. As part of the recycling program last month, we included two tractors for the uh, equipment being purchased there. This falls more in the general um, uh, already necessary equipment listing. Uh, we've reevaluated our needs and, and decided that uh, uh, to just bottom line this whole thing, one well-equipped tractor and 50-ton hauler is basically the equivalent of five trucks and five people every day. So we have found excellent efficiency with, again, an experimental uh, initiative to use what we call, nickname the Flow Boys, uh, the 50-ton haulers, which, uh, again, in, in my prior work in managing a, a county that had an asphalt plant, what killed us on our effectiveness and efficiency was trucking. All we had were dump trucks. So when you have the kind of work we have and the volume we have, and we're using the 50-ton the haulers for everything from the patching program we're going to talk about here uh, under item X um, to um, uh, regraveling to shoulder work and so forth, uh, these tractors really come in as our, our, uh, our Clydesdale horse that, that saves the day, so to speak. So they, they have a, a very significant effectiveness to our operation. Okay, commissioners looking to send this to the full board. Oh, go ahead, sir. So with the purchase of these, do you anticipate purchasing more in the future? Because I know obviously we have a contract already with DNK for our snowplow trucks for like three years, you know, at a certain price. So are you anticipating buying more of these tractors, I guess? Not any. Next you know, two years, like, where we maybe need to look into doing that type of thing again with DNK and locking in these certain prices, or what's, like, what's the longevity, and I guess what's the need for this sure. in the next three years? That's a great question, actually. These particular tractors we view as a long-term purchase, 15 to 20-year life. 
uh, we're, we, we spec them with uh, heavy duty hydraulics, uh, the wet kits necessary to run the hydraulics on the trailers, uh, heavy duty chassis and so forth. We don't expect you to do like a plow type program with these. We do have um, a couple older tractors that will come up for replacement. Uh, so the short answer is we'll probably want to purchase two more in a five to 10 year window. Um, but I don't, at this time, expect to buy any more of these particular tractors anytime soon. If anything, we might buy two more of the 50-ton haulers to, to, to marry with the tractors if we have the workload and we evaluate how things are going with the recycling program down the road. And that'd be out of this bond program right. we already right. have. That's right. not new money. Okay, thanks. I would move the motion as requested to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Item W, ground penetrating radar. Chris. Thank you. Uh, I hope I've won the, the title for the longest staff report ever. Uh, is that close? You haven't yet, but we're getting to item ah. Z, which you know what letter that is, right? Okay. Well, um, I was on vacation last week, so I, I was able to really, really think about this, and I make sure to get all my thoughts down in my, what, uh, seven-page staff report for you all to read and review. This is a um, kind of a, you know, it's that careful balance of the scientist uh, trying to bring it all to, to terms that everybody can understand the value. So the bottom line is, if we just put all these documents aside and we think for a minute, in traditional construction, you're hauling in new asphalt, new uh, aggregate, and you know what you have. You test it in the lab and you measure the quantities going down. With a recycling program, you are dealing with what's in situ. It's in place and uh, the records are not readily available. And if you remember from my presentations, some of you have seen them numerous times, one of the big problems we have is the varying thicknesses of asphalt sometimes thin, sometimes thick, and it can literally vary from thick to thin within 20 feet as you go down the road and then back to thin and then back to thick. So um, ground penetrating radar is like an x-ray. When you go to the doctor, the doctor you know, can't see inside your skin, obviously. So we need to be able to see what's under the surface. What do we have? And quite literally, the, the GPR technology today, it's, it's to, to put it, succinctly has been perfected over the last couple decades for road purposes. So nationwide it's becoming more widespread and you might be wondering well why haven't we heard about this before? Why isn't Michigan doing more of it? Um, my humble assessment is that Michigan is behind in a lot of ways and again we're catching up on you know two decades of inadequate funding so when you look outside of Michigan you see a lot of innovation happening. So um, the, the recycling program requires that we know what we have to have optimal quality. And we can waste a lot of money uh, in materials, in oil, in bad quality work, uh, or problems if we don't carefully plan each, each project. So that's one. Just mark that down as one reason and rationale for this program where it quickly pays for itself. Uh, just to do a one run through, as I mentioned in the staff report, we estimate it's between one and two million dollars just to get a quick read on the whole county using consultants. And these are numbers verified with uh, references we've called and talked to. Um, and that would be uh, what they would do is generally is just a one wheel path read. And then you'd have to do it again to get the full road read. So things happen across the width of the road where the shoulder slumps off, but the center line's fine. So it does matter where you're reading. So the system we're buying would read the entire road lane in one pass. Uh, so um, quickly, it pays for itself. Uh, things change over time, groundwater changes, so you will want to take a more detailed reading as you're designing a road. McDivitt's one. With the re-rod in the road, you want to go slow very slow so that you can see through the re-rod. You'll see clearly where the re-rod is, the steel, but you can see through that. We know there are voids under McDivitt. And just that one project, as you see in the staff report, was uh, between 16 and 20,000 to have a consultant come in, and it's only one mile of road. And uh, the responses we got were kind of like, uh, we don't have quite that technology to see through the re-rod, this kind of thing. So we were disappointed, frankly, that our, our private sector couldn't respond with equipment is frankly as good as what we're looking to purchase here. So the second big reason 
is without a GPR system, you're basically left taking random samples. And we have a protocol for that. But in order to really know what you've got on a road, you have to take a lot of cores. So in, you know, earlier we were talking about material testing. Uh, you would have to literally core every few, maybe 100 feet or so. Every single core would be tested and evaluated. Uh, there's a lot of manpower right now because we're doing cores on our project. So there's a lot of cost. That can all be wiped away. And you would basically only take what we call calibration cores. So you'd run the road. You'd take a couple where things look good just to verify what you've got. Yep, we've got sand here, we've got this much asphalt, the GPR is reading correctly. Then you look for the trouble spots, and you would take additional cores only there. So you're saving thousands and thousands of dollars on unnecessary core samples with the roads that we're improving. And then the third big one is a covert location program, and this is a growing problem statewide. And right now the response is basically two men in a truck heading out with metal detectors, walking through the ditches, looking for culverts. That's costly. Um, we're on a, we've embarked on you know, our first year in this effort, but um, with the, pro the system we're buying, it includes a 400 megahertz and a 900 megahertz antenna uh, system, which would read up to eight feet down. And you'd find those culverts quickly, just uh, taking readings on your roads. So um, right there, you, you've, you paid for a good chunk of this, assuming you know some general numbers about the time and energy it would take the two men in a truck versus what we could do. Now, the last thing I want to say real quick before taking questions is that um, we we are I want a vehicle for the equipment. It's you know put a hundred thousand dollars of equipment in a vehicle. You want the equipment, the vehicle itself to last because the installation is very customized. Um, so we're looking for a multi-use vehicle, and the passenger van struck me as one of the, not only is it one of the most common vehicles, but you need 360 degree viewing around you. So the windows in a passenger van make sense. Uh, we did look at cargo vans, but uh, with the, the rear antenna that goes eight feet in the ground, sometimes you want a person sitting in the rear looking out the back window watching it because it literally drags on the ground. Uh, the front antennas float in the air. The back one is more sensitive and needs to have direct contact with the ground. Um, the, some of the drivetrain features, um, dual batteries, heavy duty electrical, uh, run up the price tag on new. So we've been hard at work. Our team, I'm kind of proud of them. I am proud of them. Uh, we've been looking for used vehicles. Uh, not a lot has changed with this particular vehicle we're looking for. Right now we've kind of targeted a Ford Transit passenger van. It's something that the entire county can use for training, conferences. Right now, when we send more than four people to any kind of seminar or conference, uh, we have to you know, take multiple vehicles. So we're looking for something where we can jump in and, and go. But uh, between 2015 and 2018 model years, I'm not seeing a lot of changes in, in the features of the van or the reliability and so forth. So we're basically trying to find a diesel unit. Diesels, as you know, last a long time, get good fuel efficiency. And we expect a lot of idle time when the crew's out there working. Uh, we want to be able to make sure that they're in a comfortable environment in the air conditioning when they're processing the signal and so forth. So diesels will idle at a cool temperature without excessive wear. Um, we have found one right now. Uh, the new price tag you see here submitted under Macomb County's bid is 44000 for the van, which makes me wince. Um, so the used unit that we have found right now it would save us about uh, uh, twelve or 13000 on this. So uh, that would be something we'd have to move on fairly quickly. But uh, I just want you to know that we're looking for any and all ways to, to bring the price tag down. Another component of this, if you looked at the proposal, is that there's a utility cart. So about 20000 is a separate cart that we can use, parks can use uh, when it's doing projects. The city can use it. It goes eight feet down, looks for utilities. Uh, you remember the Hague Avenue Bridge project where we had the sewer issue? Um, this could have helped to avoid problems like that, expensive change orders. And that's hard to quantify, but you know, with my experience in construction, uh, things can and do go wrong. And this is the kind of proactive system that, that will help us know where our lines are before we dig with certainty. 
So happy to take any questions. I just wanted to point out that 20,000 of that did not go on the vehicle. It'll be in the vehicle to pull out and use in the right of way. We had a recent project last year, by the way, that had an underground tank, $10,000 change order. If we'd have known about that, we could have planned for it and avoided that change order as well. So there's multiple, multiple ways that a system like this uh, can prove to be cost effective. I just want to point all that out. Chris, so your, your all in amount is 196.88. That's for new vehicle, all new equipment, right? Correct. That's the amount I'm seeking for approval up to. Uh, I'll work with Mike if we can find a less expensive van or get that installation price down a little. Uh, basically just bringing to you the worst okay. case scenario. Are there any other counties that have their own uh, GPR that you're aware of in the state? In Michigan, no. But if you go nationwide, yes. There are cities that own their own. There are counties that own their own. There are state DOTs. Certainly most state DOTs have their own. Uh, I'm not sure if Michigan does or not. But... Uh, Okay, any questions, commissioners? Mr. Chairman, just I, again, I, I just want to say uh, absolutely impressed by the fact that y you recognize, I think, the tenor of the board. When you, Every one of these is a tough sell. Every one of them is going to have the same question regarding why aren't we letting the private sector do this? And so every you come in prepared to justify the cost and how it's actually a cost savings. And I just, I got to tell you again how much I appreciate that because it makes our job so much easier when we have to go out and explain to, and we're going to hear it. I'm going to hear it come, uh, you know, a Thursday from now as to why all these dollars are going out for all these new equipment and, and the ability to be able to say our team is committed to saving the dollars, whether it's the bonds that go out, whether it's the equipment we're purchasing, the end result is a better product, is a better service, and a cost savings at the same time. And I just, I just, I gotta, I really appreciate that. And I, I don't want to extend the meeting any more than I'm sure I already have, but I'm just really impressed with how, you know, particularly our roads, but other organizations have, have worked really hard to do that. And I think it holds Jackson County together as we've gotten through some pretty difficult times. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'd, I, I would move the motion to the full board. Motion and support. Questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. I think we've heard plenty. <laughs> <laughs> because Chris is thorough, of course. <laughs> okay, it's uh, sent on to the full board for further action. Uh, JC. Pothole Patching Public Private Partnership Program. That's a lot of P's. <laughs> Uh, that is actually one of the buzzwords in our industry right now, the public-private partnership, the P3s, as they call it. So um, I'm always in tune. Uh, I try to, you know, look at public-private partnerships where we can, and this is one example. We did pilot this in Calhoun, full disclosure, so I tried it next door. They had to. They had to do something. And now we're in, in somewhat of, of a similar situation where we have an epidemic pothole problem worse than ever. And when we forecast out the amount of work it's going to take our crews, um, it's a painful um, realization that we're never going to catch our tail or it's going to take us months to catch up. So uh, working with uh, Jim Cooling here and uh, Bob Griffiths, we've put together a plan. Uh, we got the bids out. We wanted to see what the numbers would be. And just so you know, they're basically on par with what it costs us. Uh, costs us about a hundred bucks an hour, uh, a little over actually. With our, if you fully charge the truck, the fuel, um, the replacement of that truck, and every bit of those costs, and the two people and the fringe and overhead, you basically get the same number. So we were very pleased with these bid results. You clearly see in the bid tab, we did not recommend award over about a hundred twenty dollar an hour threshold. And I think Jim, you were very pleased to see that we could have thirteen crews out, which is pretty much. Won't make you go insane, but gives us um, enough where we can fill our two flow boys. Basically, haul early in the morning, take our insulated trucks to the plants, fill them up with hot asphalt, and then offload them to each of these 13 contractors. And while they're working, our flow boys heading back to the plant. And my goal is to be have our potholes all fixed, you know, here by the end of May. But uh, we're going to see how this goes, and I'll report to you in early May. Uh, what we're finding. I expect good results. We did find good results in Calhoun. So Chris, two questions for me, and I think you maybe just answered it, but so this is their labor, their equipment, but using our material, and it's hot, going to be hot mix asphalt? Correct. It's their trucks, their people, and pretty much all of them are landscape firms, are they not? 
ninety percent of the responses were, and they're great with rakes and shovels. Honestly, they patch some of the best potholes th that you've ever seen. And is there going to be some kind of follow up to see what kind of work that they're doing with so many different crews? No, we trust them. They'll do good work. No, I'm kidding. Um, yes, uh, if you know anything about Jim Cooling and his work, he, he really stays on the contractors. Um, and he does it in a way where they're still his best friend at the end of the day. It's, it's, it's amazing to see his work. So uh, we do have a plan to basically set up two, two uh, crew assistants to help you and then rotate. We, we plan to have them working every day of the week, except for maybe Sundays, and give them, give them a rest. But uh, definitely Fridays and Saturdays. You have to make hay while the sun is shining. So our crews will be out as well as much as we can but to be honest with you we've got to get our crews busy on some of the project work or we're we're not going to get ahead of the contractors okay any questions for Chris from either end of the table if not motions in order John just one question yep yeah, that's two men in a truck again or two ladies in a truck as the case may be we don't know two men in a truck <laughs> basically People, two people in a truck. I like that. Thank you. Okay. If no other questions, looking for a motion. John or Sarah? Uh, so motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Sent on to the full board. Uh, bond resolution. Chris. Item Y. Item Y, I found it. Okay. Um, is Jim here? Jim's here. Yeah. Do you want to speak to this one, Jim? We've been collaborating on this. I'll give you a break. Oh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, this is the next step in the financing process for the purchase of the um, Miller um, re and, and machine and other associated equipment. Um, we've started the 45 day process, uh, but we're asking for uh, your approval of this resolution, which um, is the next step, even though the 45-day uh, period does not expire until May 14th. And the reason for this is we have a short time frame to meet a June deadline uh, to get the proceeds from the bonds so that we can, we can pay for the machines. So uh, this is, again, the next step, just a formality. My, my one comment is I appreciate the uh, one-page document that lays out the financing timetable. It, no, it makes it very clear. I'm not sure who did that, but uh, for, for both us and the public. No. Okay, any questions from commissioners? And if not, we need a motion to send it on to the full board. I move the resolution to the full board. Support. Motion in support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Item Z. <laughs> Can you tell we're busy at JTOT? <laughs> I hope so. All right. I won't bore you with uh, details on the monthly. You're welcome. But uh, I do want to point out a couple things, bragging rights, um, and one clarification. If you go to page three, road closures, only two of those are still closed, is my understanding. Um, uh, as to which two, my phone is back at my uh, my workstation back there, so I don't recall. Do you know Jim offhand? Springport. Okay, Springport is actually one of them, yeah. Um, maybe Bone Road is still closed, I think, but everything else has been opened up, if I recall. Uh, we're doing routine culvert work also, so you see basic uh, closures from time to time happening. The Q-Alert system we're implementing, and the map shown on page four with the polka dots, uh, what's cool about this is our, our working foreman using their iPads can see the service requests instantly. Uh, there's a smartphone app that people can put in their information. We already have one I know and we're going to link the two so they work together. But this is customized for for uh, the kind of work we do at a very low price tag actually. So we're, we're piloting this, implementing it, and it allows us, uh, our working foreman, to see clusters of the work based on geotags of the photos and the requests. So our working foreman are already, already really enjoying um, how much this streamlines their work. A what? It kind of is, isn't it? What do you see? Hold that away, yeah. Um, 
Uh, the last thing, uh, I uh, wanted to just give kudos to our team on the response to the accident uh, that happened, the unfortunate uh, pileup. Uh, apparently, um, MDOT and state police are, are studying what we did and how we did it. They were very impressed with uh, how quickly the road got reopened. And uh, so, real proud of our team. They really got on it and, and um, worked together um, with law enforcement to get the road open. And lastly is a uh, map showing our project work. It is on our website now, and um, if you don't yet have it in board docs, you will soon, attached to the monthly report. Uh, it's a very colorful map that shows basically thir how $34 million is getting spent this year so far. Uh, we're still waiting for some of the, the projects to roll in and get finalized. But uh, this is a, an historic year for our agency. I don't think we've ever had this much work in our history, and uh, we we continue to, to respond and uh, uh, keep things moving. Happy to take any questions. Commissioners, any questions? Deep. Oh. Absolutely. And this is everything? This is everything so far. Yep. You'll see, obviously, the clusters in Summit and Spring Arbor. There's more work next year, as we know, but this is what's being done this year. And it's not meant to be in high-resolution detail. If people want to know specifically about Summit and Spring Arbor's work, they can go to the website and get that, uh, either the township or... So we'll get some more broken-down, detailed maps. But we wanted to show you, basically, the, the coloring book map of everything that's happening countywide this year. It's quite a bit. Uh, one one thing that is still a question mark is the Michigan Avenue Bridge. Um, that one we're still pushing and trying to get going. It could move to next year, just to caution you, if you talk to folks about that. We're hopeful it'll be this year. Yeah. Chris, well, is that the one that MDOT's trying to dump long-term care or something on us? Well, it's not MDOT. MDOT's on our side. It's Amtrak. Oh. Um, we've had, uh, I went to Lansing and went to the high ups to, to ask what's going on and we're basically a guinea pig and something new that Amtrak's trying and uh, they're basically dumping it on the consultant. The county's kind of free and clear um, but they're they're basically saying that the designer for life is, is responsible for any and all accidents whatever may ever happen which is not fair to them. Usually that liability is capped at a reasonable amount maybe you know two million dollars or something like that. Um, so MDOT is studying this um, we're trying to look at options. One option that's at play right now is that they may take on, uh, we'll basically redo the contract where they take on the role of designer and then they'll subcontract out the consultant, in which case uh, that kind of takes some of the power away from what I understand that Amtrak may have. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions of Chris? Chris, thank you. Thank you. Next uh, month, I'm going to bring a bar stool. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, an uncomfortable one with a napkin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, it takes us to other business claims. Pay the bills. Motion and support. All those in favor, saying five, are saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. No other minutes. The May reporting schedule is there with Parks, Blackman DDA, Leone DDA, and JC Dot. And takes us back to public comment. Mr. Bormuth, step right up. Um, two comments. One, I'd like to compliment Chris once again for looking at the new technologies that are available nationwide that might not be in use here in Michigan or locally and might not be available through our private sector. Um, the ground penetrating radar seems to me like it will be a good idea and I'd like to hear updates after you get it and how you find that it is useful and whether or not it's meeting the expectations you had for it. The second thing, I just really want to talk about these bond issues that are put in May or in primary elections. We all know that no one, not no one, but almost no one comes out for these elections. Our turnout, voting turnout here in our county and in the United States in general is pitiful in these elections. And the only time we get 
even a reasonable segment of the population out is in November. And oftentimes we don't even get that in off-year elections. So it always strikes me as a run around the public when you put these issues on the ballot. And the public itself doesn't ever get an opportunity to vote on them. And you know exactly what I mean, Mr. Elwell, and the rest of you. And Mr. Williams has taken a position closest to mine, although he changed today. And um, I, I just really want to say that the people need to be represented in these decisions. And it's our governing idea that they get to vote on things. Ten seconds, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing none, committee member comment. And hearing none of that.